This is David Dove. This is the Balagan Connection. And uh, we're going to talk about how to understand what's going on, uh, what's happened in the past, what's happening now, what's going to happen in the future. And, and one of the things that's been kind of collecting in my brain lately is that you need two channels in order to get a good picture of what's going on. And I'm going to, for lack of a better word, call them the worldly channel and the biblical channel. And, and today I want to kind of uh, illustrate a little bit of, of the situation with both of those channels interacting between themselves. Uh, I want to talk about uh, delusions and, and, and deceptions. I want to talk again in those two channels and, and I need a lot of your prayers. So, so let's put this all together, the Balagan connection and, and see how this all ties together. The 7th of October changed everything and, and more than anything it was a wake-up call it was it was a it was a smack in the face or a bucket of, of cold water and it, it was a bucket of cold water for us uh, especially but I think to a certain extent uh, it's also been a bucket of cold water for for a lot of other people who were how do, how do you say harboring a, a delusion that I think was part of the reason I hear when the other side keep on saying what happened on the 7th of October shouldn't be taken in context only of the 7th of October. And like parents of, of teenagers, they don't want to step in and say, you guys are crazy. And let's see if I can explain. There are two main delusions that were broken, smashed to smithereens on the 7th of October. Delusion number one, that the Palestinians and most of the Arab world and most of the progressive world, and as I'm seeing today, a lot of the more anti-colonial leftist world is, is holding, and that is Israel is temporary. Israel is just a state that, will, that came in, hung around for a while, and will disappear. The Arabs actually have a very good definition. Israel is another crusade. The crusaders came in, uh, conquered the land for about 250 years, held on for a while, well, let me say 250 years, but then uh, picked up and left and this in, in the Middle East went to back to being Arab, Arab Muslim territory. Um, but for some reason, the Arabs, the Muslims believe that their conquests and their colonialism is not a problem, but when somebody else conquers or colonizes them, this is a problem. So from a worldly point of view, okay, the Arabs are in this delusion that Israel is going to pick up and leave. And, and you hear it reverberated more than anything in this from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. And, and here's the weird thing, most of them don't know what river, most of them don't know what sea, don't what that means. But if you open up a map or you know anything about what's happening here, you understand that the river and the sea is the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. What they're saying is Israel should not exist. And that's make that very clear that from the river to the sea is a call for ethnic cleansing. Put that in your mind. But nobody sees it like that. Nobody actually calls it. But we are allowing them to keep this delusion. We're allowing them to think that this is okay to say this. We're allowing them to, to say, okay, that's your opinion. We're allowing them to kind of have this terrible, terrible idea that the world is going to line up according to their reality and not according to what's going on. And the Hamas actually says that's our role, to eradicate Israel from Israel. They don't say building a Palestinian state. They say eradicate, resistance. That's their justification. The Hezbollah, okay, the Hezbollah is in, 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 in Lebanon. What issue do they have with us? They don't want a nation in Israel. They want an eradication of the Jewish state. Uh, Iran says that Israel is a cancer. They're not saying we need to find an arrangement for Israel to live in peace with its neighbors. They're saying Israel should be eradicated. And then the world accepts this and goes and creates an organization under the auspices of the United Nations that says we shall help the Palestinians, we will support them, we will educate them, we will hold them up until this change of situation comes where they will be able to eradicate Israel. It's called UNRWA, by the way, and it turns out that these are the, the organizations, the humanitarian slash UN slash crazy organizations that are funding 
education in the Gaza Strip, and they're teaching young Palestinians that someday from the river to the sea is going to be Palestine. We are paying for this. Your tax pay dollars are paying the United Nations who is paying UNRWA. And I can't help but understand that. Wait a minute. I mean, I wasn't the one who said, check out Bill Maher. I mean, not a great supporter of Israel, but surprisingly, he said, it's time for the Palestinians and the Arabs and all the progressives in the world to understand that just like California isn't going to be handed back to Mexico anytime soon, okay? And just like uh, parts of Elsass Lorraine are not going to be handed back to the Germans anytime soon, I mean, you can't think that Israel is going to hand disappear and hand back the territories of the Palestinians. It's not going to happen. So wake up. And, and here's the thing. The reason I'm calling it is a delusion because I was delusion. I was a leftist for years sitting with Palestinian intellectuals and I remember not being able to get through. Basically saying, wait a minute, okay, we're here, you're here, let's, let's live in peace. And they say, no, the occupation. I said, okay, but again, you're not going to kick us out, we're not going to kick you out. So let's live in peace. The occupation, the occupation, and, and they have raised three or four generations thinking that Israel is going to disappear. And I'm not even going into 1948 and what happened, okay? But Israel is not going to disappear. But they're growing up on this delusion. And here's the problem. The world is allowing them the delusion. Now, most of the people watching me are not kids. Most of the people that are watching me have raised kids. Most of the people that are watching me know that you have to help your children overcome their belief in the tooth fairy at some point in order to be responsible adults. You have to understand that the world doesn't run according to your delusions and part of maturing and part of growing up is, is making sure that these young people don't trick themselves into thinking that something that is not real is actually real. But on the case of the Hamas, of the Palestinians, of the Arabs, we have allowed them to keep on believing We've given them a feeling that it might happen. We have not stood up and said, that is a delusion. And, and you can talk about a delusion for a kid that's, that's five years old, okay? But if your 25-year-old is still talking about tooth fairies, there's a more serious problem going on. So that is the worldly part or the worldly channel of what I'm talking about. But here's the other side. You and I both know that Israel the people, the Jewish people, and God made a covenant, the covenant in Genesis 12. And that covenant says that these people are going to live on this land. I mean, that is a godly biblical conclusion. That is a godly biblical statute. That is a biblical reality. So when you're saying from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free of God's chosen people, you're actually coming up against God's plan. So this is a delusion on a spiritual level that actually indicates that these people believe that they can overthrow or they can change or they can misguide God's plan for what the world is going to look like. So as much as this is a worldly political delusion, a psychological delusion, this is a spiritual delusion also. And again, I can't help bringing up that when this delusion, this spiritual delusion becomes so embedded, even in people that, that believe the Bible and read the Bible, then it's more than a delusion. It is actually a deception. And it's a deception that is actually being run and propagated by the king of deceivers himself. So it's interesting to see how the worldly delusion and the spiritual delusion actually interact in a very unique issue. So the delusion that the Arabs have grown up with, or the, 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 the Palestinians have grown up with, that Israel is going to disappear, and the fact that nobody is standing up and saying, you guys are crazy, is, is part of what led up to them believing that October 7 couldn't change the situation. But that's delusion number one. Delusion number two also has two aspects to it. Delusion number two is basically that Maybe I can agree that, you know, there should be some kind of solution, but the Jews had this coming to them. Israel had this coming to them. They have treated the Palestinians so bad. They have done so much harm. They have done so much. 
uh, apartheid, genocide, uh, uh, how do you say, open jail, uh, open air jail, all of these, they, they treated these Palestinians so bad that what happened was justified. In a worldly sense, again, if you look at the history, you look at what's going on, the Israelis have treated the Palestinians better, okay, than any other people has treated its enemy, except maybe the United States of America in, in World War II. And, and as proof of that, we can actually bring the Arab Muslims that live among us. 20% of Israel's population are Arab Muslims. And they're treated wonderfully. There's no apartheid. They're treated with respect. Their language, their culture, their religion is actually respected and, and protected in Israeli society. So it's not that we're treating them bad. Okay, and again, if you kind of look at how we've been fighting this war, how we fought these wars in the back, Israel is the most moral military in the, in the world. But again, the world has bought into this delusion because it makes the other side look good. It's more of a tribal issue. My side is always right. What I say is always right. So, so the other side is trying to look good. And, and the other side is willing to lie and cheat about what's happening even on the ground in Israel. Okay. And, and what I'm trying to say is that is the worldly part. Israel is a colonizer, Israel is an occupier, Israel is genocidal. All of these are progressive left wing because this is part of the left wing against the world kind of concept. But there's also a biblical side. And the biblical side, again, the more and more kind of deeper side, is, is something that I've been kind of tending around. I'm, I'm living uh, in, in Los Angeles today uh, until this is going through. And, and I'm, I'm connected to different uh, churches in the area. And, and I'm, I'm, for the first time in my life, really connecting to the body of Christ here, here in, in, in the United States. And, and one of the things that I've kind of grown up with and kind of seen a lot here is, is the concept of, of the pastor's family or what we call PKs, okay, who are, you know, the, the, the church has a, has a pastor, has leadership, has spiritual leadership, and, and the PKs uh, play a very important role. I'm a PK. I'm married to a PK today. And, and the way I tend to see it is God's people are GKs. They're, they're God's kids. And just like any of you who go to a church on a regular basis know that sometimes the PKs are, are singled out for special um, treatment, the PKs are expected to uphold a higher spiritual standard, the PKs are supposed to be uh, um, more righteous, and the thing is PKs are kids just like anybody else, they're, they're, they're human beings just like anybody else, some of us are good, some of us are bad, some of us are more spiritual, some of us are left, but we're high, held up to higher standard because we grew up in the pastor's house. And I think to a certain extent what you're seeing here with Israel is the same thing. Israel is being held up to a higher standard than any other nation in the world. Any other nation on, in a combat situation, any other nation in, in a military situation, we are expected and we're held up to, to standards that nobody has actually been held up to. And I do believe deeply that part of the reason is that it's more than just because of somebody's idea. And not that we don't make mistakes, don't get me wrong. Not when we don't think, do things wrong. But on the whole, we're a much more moral army, nation, politics, whatever you want to call it, than any other nation. So why is the fact, that why is this being? Because it's a spiritual attack against God's people. And if you can't attack God, attack God's kids or God's children, or God's chosen people. And again, we represent, to a certain extent, God's meddling in the affairs of men in the world today. So these are the two delusions that I've been kind of reverberating in my mind lately about how to understand what has happened, how to understand uh, what's going on, and, and what I need from people who support Israel. Is, is first of all, understand the delusions. Understand, accept them. Realize what's going on. Uh, find information that gives you both of these aspects. And, and again, uh, you can't really just check or you can't really just understand the, the events only in the, in, the, in the worldly sense. You have to understand the events also in a spiritual sense and tie the two together, just like 
any pastor has been doing and, and your pastor has been doing in your church ever since you've been going to these sermons. Tie it. It is as much a spiritual event as anything else. And, and, and connect to the spiritual side. And the way to connect to the spiritual side is be a spiritual player, be a spiritual warrior, be a spiritual element in this. And again, I'm going to say pray for Israel. That's the spiritual side. Be educated about what's going on. Be a part of what's going on, but also play a role in the worldly side. They're connected, okay? Make your government clear. Make it clear to your government that you expect your government to support Israel. Israel is being uh, pulled back and held back by the United States government very, very carefully as of now, but we're not being allowed to finish off and, and take out that terrible cancer that is taking hold in Gaza. And, and the more pressure we get from, from your government here in the United States, the harder it, it will be for, for these uh, terrible people to, to be taken down and for Gaza to be set free from, from the Hamas and from everything that that means. So, so we need you to play a political role. We need you to play a media role. We need you to understand we, who we are. We need you to reach out to Jews, to Israelis, to people and say, yes, we know that you're being pointed out. We know that you're being specialized. We know that you're being attacked because you're God's people. And we who believe in God and love God and love Jesus and love God's kids want to support you want to support what's going on, want to understand what's happened to you. We want to realize and, and help you with this trial that you're going through as a people. And, and that's what I think I came to say today. You have to understand that we are going through a trial because of who and what we are as much as anything else on the worldly political geopolitical level. Balagan Connection really needs your support. I need your support. Uh, please write in your comments that these updates and these, these videos are important to you because I'm having a hard time kind of pushing through, uh, trying to be fruitful or trying to be uh, very appropriate for, for, for my time here uh, and, and feeling that I, I should be there and, and God's put me here to do something uh, kind of important. This is David Tan. This is the Balagan Connection and, and hope to see you soon.